Okay, um, I do have a fact sheet that I will circulate uh, and that mostly it resumes what the European Commission is doing to tackle disinformation and, and fake news. Uh, but ahead uh, of the European elections, we have been studying how the Europeans are worried or not with fake news and disinformation. And we came to a point uh, where we think that European citizens ahead of the, the, the elections were quite worried about this, this topic. And this is not a, a new business to the world, of course, but it's not a new business inside the EU institutions. In fact, we started in 2015 with the, with the ISTRATCOM, which is a cell under the European uh, External Election Service to deal with uh, information coming uh, from the eastern part. And in Portugal, it's, we are not that close to that, but our colleagues working in other representations were quite, um, were quite worried uh, uh, about, about this issue. And between 2018 and 19, because we had some like 40 electoral processes going on in, in Europe, uh, we decided, or the, the Commission together with member states, to put forward a strategy and a code of conduct and, um, that was built on a voluntary basis to work also with platforms and to work on uh, the, the, the limitation of spreading this sort of, of news. Um, again, for me, working with journalists and in the press sector, it's very difficult to separate what is fake news, uh, what is disinformation, and what is a myth, okay? Sometimes just uh, um, a factual mistake of a news piece can degenerate into or can be disseminated has uh, uh, on purpose, has uh, a disinformation piece, and then it, uh, of course, it becomes uh, to be um, a, 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 a lie, an online lie, furthermore. So, what we did was to engage with the platforms and ask them to, on a voluntary basis, to start reporting to us again uh, before the elections what would be their actions, not only regarding bots or uh, fake accounts. Uh, but also on media literacy and on transparency of ads, for instance. So it's something we tried to do voluntarily. Some people say that we were late to catch the train, uh, and, and, and somehow I have been receiving that, that criticism. And, and so what happened here in Portugal? I, I'm just bringing a couple of uh, front pages with stories that became, has, um, not exactly has fake news, so no one woke up in the morning. I don't believe that the journalist wakes up in the morning and, and, and wants to write something wrong, because if he's a journalist, he will not do it. Uh, but uh, the news reports were not that precise, and then, of course, it degenerated in something like these front pages of two main newspapers in Portugal saying that Europe is forbidding to smoke on the beach. We had... Um, a huge amount of, of news reports going out and in fact this was not related to the EU, this was related to a UN, a United Nations convention that member states have signed but other more than 180 member states have also signed. So, But the blame was of course that the European wanted to ban smoke on, on the beach. Then we had also that it's very particular in Portugal, which is fishing sardines. And uh, again, we had that a very technical report uh, on uh, the, the size of the fish and that we somehow here and there for bi biology reasons should stop or should have some stopping moments all over the year to fish sardines. Of course, it degenerated that Portugal is pressed to stop fishing sardines and just for you to know, 130 <coughs> news reports in 24 hours with live reports from restaurants. Are you eating sardines? Um, is the sardine okay? Is it tasteful? But you know that the EU is blocking and Portugal will never uh, fish sardines um, again. But we had uh, also other cases. We had the shoes of the president. And here, this is a picture taken at the Justus Lipsius, the Council Headquarters press conference, where a journalist takes a picture, and apparently the color of the shoes of the president are different. So in minutes, it became viral that President Juncker were, was wearing different shoes, 
and also because his assistant approached him and apparently he had to be in the room while the president of South Africa was speaking and he went to the backstage and then he came again to, to, to the room. So immediately Juncker leaves the press conference room because he has one shoe, one brown and one black shoe. Minutes. It took minutes to be everywhere. This picture was taken by a journalist, so I'm not talking about secret services, nor Russians, nor bots. I'm talking about the journalists who, take, who took the pictures. And then at the time we had to ask a, a national fact-checking uh, newspaper, could you please check that the president had two shoes, the two black shoes in the meeting before the press conference, so that to prove that the, factually that report was, was not correct. But we also had another case uh, regarding a database of mayors in Europe who were applying for the Wi-Fi for you. Um, that apparently we had a bug, an IT bug, that was reported as the European Commission uh, has opened the data, the personal data of uh, these mayors to all over the world, which factually it was not correct. And then it comes to the point where I will tell you my my experience and my story to come to the to the heading of this panel which is about democracy and online democracy one day i was in the office and i got a call from my colleagues in brussels uh, from the social media team and they said what's going on in portugal i said well sunny day as usual and lots of things to do so there's something bizarre there. In one hour, we got 7,000 replies to one Instagram post regarding Article 13. In one hour, 99% were from Portugal, grounded in Portugal. So they've asked us what's going on there. I was not aware, I have to admit. And then I understood that a, a Portuguese YouTuber had published a video saying that internet was to be blocked by the European Union. That Europe would shut up the internet, shut down the internet, and that he would lose his channel on YouTube. And it happens that it's one of the most viewed bloggers or vloggers or YouTubers in Portugal. And immediately it generated, I can tell you, a three weeks time of reactions online. Kids crying inside, um, their schools, teachers tagging the European Commission, organizing special debates on Article 13, people insulting us, saying, you're just Eurocrats, so why do you want to shut down YouTube? And this is, again, time to come to my point, which is everybody has the right of express themselves. And it's good. And that's the thing, and that's the good thing of social media. It allows us to be here. It allows people in Brussels and in all over Europe to hear what we're saying here. That's fantastic. It's inclusive. But with that huge facility and that great thing, which is internet and social media, it comes also an increased responsibility for what you post and for the opinion you have. And in this case, of course, it generated a huge debate in Portugal, I can tell you. Um, so then my, my representative, the representative of the commission in, in Portugal um, offered herself to, to, to speak to several YouTubers. She wrote an open letter to YouTubers, which is not very normal. Usually the commission is not writing to specific groups. In this case, she wrote to YouTubers saying the internet will not will not end, YouTube will not end. What we're trying to do is to reflect in the digital world <coughs> the rules we have on copyright in the physical world. So we faced some weeks of um, insults also on very good debates, I have to say. We went to several schools and radio programs and debates on TV, but also um, it made me think that for a given generation, we are not in the same planet. Because these kids, they do not consume information. They don't open a newspaper. 
they open their Instagram accounts or their Facebook account, uh, accounts, they have lots of contents that are proposed to them. Um, sometimes they don't even look for that, the information, but they consume what their, their tribes consume. And in this case, it was a one-way opinion. Then, of course, it generated into a campaign. We understood that at the time, Google had their own interests, of course, and they are a company, that's their job. Uh, so, of course, they wrote to several YouTubers in Europe, and in Portugal, it happened to be one who has led this movement against Article 13 that then turned to be Article 18 that was voted finally at the Parliament following uh, lots of also pressures uh, next to the members of the Parliament. So, I might disagree with some of the opinions that were expressed here. I have to thank to the, to the two speakers who spoke about all the opportunities uh, that the European Commission is giving to the citizens. One of the things with the Article 13 were people were saying, but why are you regulating this? Why are you doing this? And then we had to say, yeah, but we have consulted before and artists and journalists and media owners are willing to have some kind of a copyright regulation on the uh, online world. So sometimes people don't understand that we do consult, actually, that we have the tools into place, uh, but they feel that social media is sometimes the easiest way of doing that. So what I say to journalists when I speak to them uh, regarding these headlines I, I just showed you, the easiest way is you have an organization that is completely open. We do have the major press corp accredited in the world. We do have daily press conferences. We do have Europe directs everywhere, information centers. We do have a landline that you can call and it's free of charge that you can ask. You do have social media accounts in all representations. We have 180 delegations all around the world. No other institution is replying to citizens as we do, and I can tell you, because my social media manager was having a break after, after this crisis. And, and we're here to help, and we're here to hear. So, um, Paolo was giving a couple of, um, um, of, uh, of tips on how to deal with the digital world. In case of doubt, ask. We are all human beings. And I know that most of the times we are known as bureaucrats and distant people, but actually we are just people. So we have phones and emails and you have landlines and social media, so use it properly and use it for you. Use that information for you.